Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today is the day 5 for our PCNSA series. So in this video, we are going to talk about packet flow. Okay, so we'll go deep dive and we'll try to understand how packet flow works in Palo Alto Firewall. Now there are a few stages that we need to cover in very detailed way like e ingress, the firewall session setup, understanding or identifying the application or content and egress. We are going to discuss about these steps in a very detailed way with the help of a diagram. Okay, so I'll request you to please watch this video till till then because it will help you in clearing the interviews or troubleshooting any real time issues because if you know about how packet flow works in Palo Alto Firewall it will be helpful and also I will request to please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any video from me so without any further delay guys let's get started So friends, for understanding the packet flow of Palo Alto Firewall, we are going to follow a KB article which is basically nicely made by Palo Alto Networks. We are going to follow that particular article or a diagram to understand the packet flow. Okay, I'll show you how exactly to search that particular packet flow from Google if you are unable to find that particularly. What I'll do is I'll put the link in the description. You can find it in that particular in this video description. So you just need to search packet flow in Palo Alto. That's all. Now the first article that you see packet flow sequence in Palo Alto, right? So you have to click here. Now there are two ways which is defined in this KB article. Okay. So it been defined with the theory part as you can see over here and also it is defined in a uh, flow chart way basically so if you want to see this particular uh, diagram or a flow chart you just need to click here it will be opening in a separate window with a higher resolution okay so you just need to click here and you can adjust accordingly so first of all, we are going to talk about ingress, how exactly the packet get enters into Palo Alto Firewall. We are going to talk about that. Okay. So friends, now we'll see when the traffic enters into Palo Alto Firewall, what exactly it does. Okay. So receive a packet. So receiving a packet can come from any of the interface or any of the zones. So let's say from inside or outside anywhere so i the palo alto will receive a traffic right so it can be received in any of the zone interface right so once it receives the traffic it extract the information of layer 2 layer 3 and layer 4 meaning that it retrieve the information about mac address ip address and the port details at layer 4 and also it also try to check the interface so for an example interface 1 slash 1 1 slash 2 or 1 slash 3 whatever interfaces okay and the zone lookup so it is coming from inside or it is coming from outside it also retrieve this information as well right and fragmentation reassembly if applicable so maybe he'll try to collect all the data if that action is applicable so sometimes what happens is if he understand or Palo Alto gets to know that it has some issue with the packet or uh, it's kind of attack or the pattern what he sees that it's kind of attack so it reassembles the data and try to analyze it okay so friends once the Palo Alto extract the information related to l2 l3 and l4 it tries to check the errors so what kind of error uh, 
in mac level there can be a checksum error and there are so many other errors are there as well in ip we have some kind of ping of death there are so many attacks that can happen at layer 3 so that checking will be happening for an example ping of death now at layer 4 there are so many uh, errors are also there like there are so many attack can happen to check that for an example the source port number or the destination port number would be zero for an example so the port details what you are going to see is the zero so that is a there is a error in that particular layer 4 or it's kind of attack right so that if that kind of things will be there in in that particular layers that packets will be discarded okay there are so many if you go through that particular kb article you will see uh, you will find a lot of attacks related to this error checking okay so once that error passes or if there is no error found in it the firewall inspection applicable will be happening okay now firewall inspection then it'll go for ipsec ssl vpn tunnel packet so in tunnel packet what happens is there will be a packet where we have all private information and there will be a upper layer traffic which is having a public IP address. If you are not sure about it, what is uh, how tunnel works, we are going to cover in this series. So let, let it be. If you are not able to understand, there is, there is no problem at all. Okay. So once the traffic received by Palo Alto, it will check the public things like the IP header of public tunnel. Okay. So friends, basically when the packet received by Palo Alto, first it will check the public header. Okay. And after the decryption of that public head, uh, private header, it will again go back to the same packet ingress process. So in private header, we have this information, right? So it will again, it will check the error for the private IP address. If you are still not able to understand, there's no problem. We are going to cover it. And also the packet flow, we will be doing once we are near to um, ending of the session as well. Like when we are going to end the series before that we'll go for a packet flow because we will be able to cover the advanced topic and then we'll go for a packet flow so that our understanding will be more. Right now we are not covering, there are few parts as well like the DOS protection we are not covering here. We are going to cover there as well. Okay, so don't worry about it. This is the simple thing that we need to learn right now because as we are a beginner for this course, that is the reason I'm just covering the basic part of it. Okay. So guys, so friends, now it will go for firewall in inspection applicable. Okay. And it will be going either to slow path or either to fast path. Now, slow path, when it will go to slow path, when it will go to fast path, I have already covered in my previous video. So if you are not sure what is slow path and what is fast path in that particular case, you please check my previous video. If you are not able to find that particular video, I'll put in the I button. You can just click on the I button of this video. You will get that or else you can check the description as well. I'll put the link of my previous video. And I'll recommend you to please watch that video and come and resume the video from here. Okay. So friends, uh, we'll talk about the slow path first and then we'll go for fast path. Now slow path is basically, I'll give you a hint of it. So slow path is like, let's say if a machine is initiating a TCP connection with another machine. So TCP handshake happens first. So in TCP handshake, first traffic known as send, send traffic. 
so in a session if you talk if you try to understand in the session tcp sin traffic is the first traffic so this is the first traffic which palo alto has received there is no session that has been created we have to create the session for that we have to look for rules we have to look for uh, create the sessions and all right so let's move on and we'll try to understand this okay so the first thing what happens is forwarding lookup get the egress interface so here as he has already got about the source zone from which zone the traffic has received he'll try to find out the destination zone with the help of routing table right and also the interface e1 by 1 or e1 by 2 or something like that right and also virtual system we are not going to details just just try to understand that it will try to find out the destination zone okay and after that the nat policy lookup happens so nat policy lookup here the nat policy is nothing but your day nat that is destination nat okay if you guys don't know about it we'll we'll cover it in nat section so destination nat if the destination nat is present it'll check and again the lookup will be happening okay so after the nat happens again the routing lookup will be happening okay if there is no nat then it will skip and it will go for firewall security policy lookup so as we have already seen it ha it it knows about the source zone destination zone source ip address destination ip address uh and the port details he has all the details now he'll check the firewall security policy lookup okay so now in security policy he'll check one by one so it start with 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and he'll go further now he'll check whether that particular source and destination is matching with rule 1 rule 2 rule 3 rule 4 rule 5 or further if there is no rule found it will basically discard the traffic of if rule founds then it creates a session now how that particular sessions look like let me explain you as i have already covered about the stateful firewall so what exactly it does is it creates a session for the traffic which is going the source ip information destination ip information source port destination port all this information and also it creates a mirror rule as well so opposite of it so let's say if my source is 1 destination is 2 source port number is 3 and destination port number is 4 then my source ip address like for return traffic because he'll be creating a session for both right my source ip will be it is 2 destination will be 1 and uh, source port number will be 4 destination port number will be 3 like this so it has more more information i'm just putting you for a uh, understanding i i cannot write all this information because i'll show you once we do the practical i'll show you how that particular session look like okay so just think about it this is the information it is from source to destination and destination to server so it will create a table like this so that whenever the traffic comes from this from the source to destination i'll check the table and allow the connection if return traffic is coming i'll check the connection and allow the connection like that it is so this is how the traffic flow will be happening once the session is installed in the session table okay so once the session table is basically created after that again the nat will happen so here firewall processing again the nat will happen and nat in sense here the source nat will happen the source ip address will get changed right we'll talk about what is source nat what is destination nat in the next section okay we'll go further 
and here SSL proxy decryption of packet if applicable. Let's understand. So friends in SSL proxy or decryption what exactly happens is let's understand with a scenario. Let's say this is my PC and I want to connect with Google. Okay. So I'll create an SSL tunnel with it. Now, once I build a SSL tunnel, whenever the PC sends any traffic towards Google or Google re responds to that particular request, it will go through the tunnel. Now in middle, whatever the device is there, he'll never get to know what the information is exchanged between this machine to the server. Now Google is popular website that is fine. But if I go to a website which is unknown or which is not known by the user itself right so in that case if the web server is injecting some kind of malware or any other kind of infected file to the client the middle device will never get to know or the firewall will never get to know so to get to know about what exactly the transaction that is happening from the source to the server he'll do a decryption so he'll decrypt the traffic he'll check what is there and then he will again encrypt the traffic and sends to google.com okay so this is how the decryption will be happening now once he decrypts it he'll get the information about what kind of application it is using it'll go and check in the application identification and what kind of content whether it has any uh, which URL it is going, any antivirus signatures, uh, it will check the malware, it check the files, everything it will check in the content inspection. So both ways he will try to find out what application it is using in the application, what kind of content he is using. Okay. So after once he analyze everything accordingly whatever you configured in the policy so in the policy you will be saying that this is the application allowed for this user this is the content which is allowed for this user okay if everything matches everything is okay then it re-encrypts the traffic if all okay okay after that now there are so many stages it will go through I'm not covering all the stages over here because I am going to cover in the specific sessions. Okay. And also once we complete the advanced topic, we are going to cover packet flow again with a debug label so that we can, we increase our understanding. If I try to cover the debug level understanding here, you will not be able to understand because it's the beginner. This is for beginner. Okay. Now. Once everything looks okay, it'll go to forwarding or egressing. Okay, so packet forwarding processing it uses and it goes to basically processing of it. If it has any applic, uh, if it needs to apply any QS policy or shaping or fragmentation, okay, and then it goes to egress tunnel and the transmit packet. If not, then again, it will go for if it is a IPsec tunnel, then tunnel encrypts the traffic and goes to and transmit the traffic. So this is the whole process. Okay. Of packet flow inside Palo Alto. If you answer this in a this. Uh, so guys, a. So friends, if you give explanation like this to the interviewer, I guess he will be able to understand what you're trying to say. And this is the basic level of understanding. Now he will be asking little bit of questions inside the flow. If you are good with the particular topic or technology, you will be able to answer it. Okay. I guess this explanation is very much good for you once you go for interview because you are not going to explain him the packet flow for half an hour or one hour something like that okay so this is enough for you guys 
try to go through this video again and again so that you will be good at it okay so whenever we go for any kind of other explanation you can basically correlate with the packet flow or any kind of troubleshooting as well okay so guys this is what i wanted to cover in this video if you increase your knowledge or maybe if you get to know something new today please hit the like button if you have any suggestion for my video please put it on comment or you can just send me a message on facebook or instagram wherever you want thank you so much for watching till the end and i'll see you in the next video thank you